good morning friends so today's topic is the ldp2 sr interworking so let's say you are planning to migrate from ldp2 sr but half of your my, uh, network is still running the ldp and half of network is still running the sr So in that scenario, you will be worried how exactly LDP to ESR in, uh, interworking is working. As mentioned in the diagram, so R1, R2, R3 is part of the LDP domain and R3 onwards till R6 is part of the segment routing domain. So if you have the source in the LDP domain and destination in the segment routing domain then you no need to worry about that. The integration happens between LDP to SR on R3 is seamless. We don't need to do any action. But let's say that source is in the segment routing domain. and destination could be anywhere a, a non segment routing domain either it could be ldp rsp or any other domain so in that case there are some challenges because segment routing don't understand any other label apart from the index value which carries in the igp So whenever it will try to trace route or it will try to reach to destination from segment routing domain to non-segment routing and if it don't find any index value or label value then it's going to drop that packet. So let's see how exactly it works in the from the LDP to SR and from SR to LDP. So this is the diagram R1, R2, R3 part of LDP domain and R4, R5, R6 is a part of the segment routing domain. So let's check the status. So I am running the ISIS agency. If you check the LDP neighborship between R1 and R2 it is up if you check the forwarding table let's say let's check for the destination 6 it says that yes my local label is 24006 and outgoing label which I received from R2 is 24005 if we check the safe entry for that it says that my local label is 24006 a packet hits with this 24006 or any other unlevel packet and if it is going out via this interface R1 is going to impose the label 24005 which he received from R2 so this is it about the LDP stresses on R1. Let's check on the R2. ISIS agency level 2 agencies up with R1 and R3. LDP is up between R1 and R2 and R2 and R3. If we check the bindings as well. So here are the bindings we received from 1 and 3. This is the forwarding table populated. So if we check the prefix 1066 which is the destination for us from the LDP to SR domain. So here it is saying that my local label is 24005. If I receive packet from R1 with the label 24005 I am going to swap it with the label 24004 which R2 has received from R3 
let us check the safe table. The local level is 24005 and he is going to swap it with the 24004. So, if we check on the R3, the node which is running LDP on one side and the segment routing on other side. So, it is running the level 2 ISIS agency bit with the R2 and R4. So, it is running the LDP only with the router R2, not with the R4. If we check the ISIS configuration for the segment routing, so the segment routing is unable and it is advertising the prefix it index 3 for R3. This is the forwarding table where you are saying the index well label values calculated based on the index values and LDP labels. So, if you check for the particular prefix, here it is because R3 is the border node between LDP and the segment routing. So, you can see the label transition happens from the LDP to SR is seamless. So, this is the local level for R3 where he is going to receive the packet with the label 24004 from R2 and he is going to seamlessly swap it with the 16006 and send it towards the R4. So, this is the how local label and then label impose. So, this is the label SR prefix here. If we see it on R2, we should not see any label SR here because those are plain LDP. But from R3 onwards, we should see this prefix as a labeled SR. And if you check the entry on this is running the ISIS agency with R3 and R4. This is the MPLS forwarding table and let us check the entry for R6. So, it is going to swap with the 16006. So, if we check the database to check these entries. So, this is the entry for R1 where we do not see any index value because th that is part of the LDP domain. R2, we do not see any prefix. R3, we should see the prefix here. Yeah. So, here is the R3. So, we can see the prefix index value 3. If you check the R4, we should get the index value for R4 that is 4. This is R5 and index value is advertised is 5 and last is the R6 index value is 6. So, same entry you are going to find on the R5 and R6. ISIS is sub between R4 and R6. And here should be implicit null pop yes. So, whatever packet he is going to receive from R5, he is going to pop it out and do the implicit penultimate hop popping and forward packet to the R6. So, if we trace route it from R1 it should work seamlessly without any issue. 24004, 24005, 
is the label pushed by R1 which is advertised by R2 24004 the label swapped by R2 and 24004 label he has received from R3. So, R3 is acting as the border router between LDP and ASR where seamlessly he is swapping the label 24004 with 16006 and then rest of the segment routing the domain follows that 16006 label value and swap it according to that one. If you trace root SRMPLS, what do you think, what output you should get? Do you think that you will get the output here? No, because R1, R2 and R3 is part of the LDP domain, hence you will not get any output for this command. But if you check the trace root MPLS, IPv4 we should get the same entry which we saw in the normal trace root command. So, these are the label used by LDP and these are the label used by the segment routing. This is how it works when the source is in the LDP domain and destination is in the segment routing domain. But situation change when the source is in the LDP domain sorry source in the segment routing domain and destination is in the non segment routing domain. Even if let us say we have LDP domain on the source and LDP domain on the destination, but in between we have the segment routing domain in that case also it would not work. So, we should have some solution on that because for the segment routing routers we just need the index value based on that it can calculate the label value. So, we should have some mechanism where segment routing routers can get that label value for those LDP running nodes. So, we have solution here is a mapping server which is kind of you can correlate it with the BGP route reflector which is just advertising the entries. So, mapping server can be anything in the segment routing domain which advertise the seed entries on behalf of the nodes which are running the LDP domain. So, if we talk from the R6 perspective which is part of the segment routing domain and if we are going to trace route to 111 which is 111 is part of the LDP domain it is not going to work. So, if you can see here it is using the plane entries because we do not have any label for this particular prefix. And if we check this safe entry, sorry I am checking the entry for the 6, but let us check for the prefix 10.1.1. So, you will not you are not getting any MPLS forwarding entry here, but if you check the safe entries there is no label value for that and it is the as shown earlier 
it's the plain ip4 packet but on r3 it pushes the label to 400 which he received from r2 and r2 does the implicit null and forward packets to the r1 but in this segment routing domain we could see it's a completely plain ip4 so you can configure the mapping server on any router so let's say the let's take the border router itself and configure this uh, mapping server configure segment routing let's go for it mapping server prefix it map address family ipv4 so now we need the entries for r1 r2 and r3 so r3 already we have the seed index value if we check here so we have the index value because on r3 we are running the segment routing so we need the entries for r1 and r2 so let's say 10.1.1.1/32 the index value so it should be 1 for r1 and i don't need any range here so next one is range but i don't need any range here because the range in you configured when you want to advertise the entries for multiple nodes in just single command so let's say so this range commands is useful when you want to advertise the index value so it is the start of index so let's say i want to advertise index range start with 100 and range number of allocate let's uh, allocate the 100 so it start from 10.1.1.0 something so first value will be 100 and till it will go towards 200 so this is for range command is used here but we don't need the range command because we are advertising the single value and for to the r2 it is the index value 2 so that's it and this is the complete configuration for the mapping server so once we configure these entries you need to advertise into the isis because receive is by default on but advertise is not so you need to advertise these entries segment routing prefix it map advertise so receive is by default on so we don't need to configure the receive mode on the r4 r5 r6 because by default it is on just we need to advertise it local and that's it so if we check the complete configuration here this is the complete configuration for the segment routing where you are defining those prefix and in its index value if you want to range then you can define the range and then advertise that value into the segment routing so before that we can just verify prefix entry for so we don't have any and if we check the active policy we don't have any active policy on here so once we commit we should get the index value 
R3 will advertise those index value in the IGP towards R4, R5 and R6 and then these routers will calculate the label based on those index value. You can see here, so R4 is receiving the two free pixels while from the mapping server with the index value 1 and 2 and range you can see 1 and if you check the MPLS entry here it is. So R5 you will also have the same entry and let's check on the R6. You can see here that entry has been populated and let's check for the 2 as well. So here is the MPLS forwarding table entry for the R2, label is 16002. So if we check the active policy, so we are getting the 2 prefixes with the seed index value and its range. So you can see here now this is the label DSR. So earlier it it was not marked with the label DSR, but once we get the seed index value, it mark as this destination prefix is marked as a label DSR, and then these are the local and imposed value. So if we remember this was the tra previous trace route before the mapping server. So let's run is after the mapping server. So here it is. Sixteen thousand is pushed by the R six, R four swap with the same, R three swap with the same, and. R3 swap it with the label entry which he got from the R2 and R2 does the penultimate hop popping. So if we check the SR MPLS, here is the label entry for this particular path. So if we check on the R3 now. So, if packet gets with the 16006, 16001, it swap it with the 24004 label which he has received from the R2 and this is how it works. Thank you for watching it and if you have any query, please comment below, definitely I will get back to you. And in the part 2, I am going to cover the scenario where Initial portion is the LDP, middle one is segment routing and then destination is in the LDP. So it works different in that scenario and also in the upcoming session I am going to cover ISIS multi-level scenario as well because there are also some challenges there are there to configure the mapping servers. So stay tuned and thank you very much.